fault lines in Turkey's political landscape began to emerge. By 2013, cleric Fethullah Gulen, living in exile in Pennsylvania, and President Erdogan had become rivals. The Gülenists, at a certain point, with the changes in Turkish politics, they came to a stage where I think uh, they believed that they could uh, shape the Turkish political structure. You start to have this wave of tapes and information about dirty dealing and corruption, and it was effectively an attempt to dethrone Erdogan, to force him from power. Once they defeated their common enemy, Turkey's secular military elite, Erdogan was quickly able to shift gears and make the Gülen movement, even before the coup, into public enemy number one. Fuel was added to the fire when Washington began to arm Kurdish forces to fight ISIS. From the Turkish perspective, Turkey, a NATO ally, the YPG is a terrorist organization. It was stood up by another Kurdish organization, a Turkish Kurdish organization called the Kurdistan Workers Party, known by its acronym, the PKK. And the PKK has been waging a terrorist war against the Turkish state since the mid-1980s. So here we have this extraordinarily complicated and rather awkward situation in which the United States is working with the sworn enemy of one of its most important allies. The United States introduced striker armored personnel carrier vehicles to northern Syria, and the stated official reason for that was to deter, using the word deter, attacks by Turkey on US allies, Kurdish militia forces. So we're functionally now putting assets in place to prevent a US ally from striking another US ally. That's a complicated relationship. In 2016, Turkish forces loyal to Erdogan put down an attempted coup d'etat, which Erdogan blamed on exiled cleric Gulen. I have never supported a coup or an ouster. I think any change should happen as a result of an election, if that is required. It is important that democracy is not harmed. Erdogan has been reshuffling the senior military staff. He has been removing secular generals. If you're one of the senior generals and you see that there's a high probability you're going to be purged, the leader is no longer gonna be delivering the goodies to you. One of the things you have to think about is maybe I can get rid of this guy. Gulenist terrorists were known in the military and they were going to be discharged. The government intelligence agencies had proof of who was who. Before this happened, they decided to attempt a coup. On the night of July 15th, Turkish people saw tanks in the streets. Erdogan's response to the coup was probably he had a shock in the beginning like most people, but in, in a few hours, he did something very important. He, with his cell phone, called CNN Turk, Turkey's most important news channel, and said that I'm alive, I'm here, I'm resisting, and I'm calling on my citizens to go out on the streets and resist the coup. Turks have such character. They'd rather die than live on land that is occupied. This trait is why people stayed out that night in the streets, refusing to go home despite the tanks, helicopters, and F-16s flying low. I was shot nine times myself. 